Okay, so I walk up to this, and why I walk up to this, I want you to guess the color of this carpet, yes. which looks to me red. I hope it looks red to everyone. Yes. Yeah? It looks red to everyone? What do we have to see a red color with? Blood? Rose. Rose. So rose is a sign of affection, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so is the blood a sign of life and affection. And my talk today is going to be focused on blood donations. The idea whenever we look at I mean, TEDx or any such event, the idea is very clear that it's about global connectivity, global initiative and compassion and making the world a better place to live. Now what can be better than donating blood? And when we are discussing blood donation, You'll be surprised to know that every 80 seconds, a human being in India needs blood. Every 80 seconds. An unfortunate part that why we have a history and culture of giving, donation is not an act of giving, but an act of compassion. It's not about uh, anything in reciprocity, that you give and you get something but it's about who you are, what you stand for. From cultural perspective, this is what is culturally given to us, dan. And dan is the biggest form of dan. The righteous, the correct, the empathetic one, the compassionate one. And yet, coming from those backgrounds, we've chosen not to address something as simple as this, which every human being can give. Everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean virtually every healthy individual who is an adult capable of taking a decision. Going by the history or the religious connect, I can easily say that it's not just Hinduism which propagates Dan or Dhan. If you look at Thirukural, the ancient uh, Tamil literature, it also talks about that uh, the, the gleam in the eye, a smile on your face, uh, what you can give to the world is an act of charity. Kind words, compassion, sympathy. Sikhism talks about life, not just about yourself, but serving the fellow human beings. Buddhism talks about perfection. An act of being a perfect human being is an act of generosity. For yourself, not for others. You're not seeking anything in return. It's just for yourself. And all the Abhanic religions, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, all the three of them talks about the idea of donations, the idea of charity, organized, not necessarily individual. We recognize it individually also, very personal. So when the world is around charity, what can be more charitable than giving blood? Nothing more charitable because when you give blood, you're giving the gift of life to someone. And one doesn't realize how, how important it is to give the gift of life to someone till one needs it. Or one's near and dear one's needed. Protecting the identity of certain people who I know personally, who've gone through these travails of life, and share certain stories. And those are really moving stories. So a lady at the age of 29, who's lived a happy life, very vivacious, full of life, suddenly discovers she's got breast cancer. And while she's getting treated with proton therapy, with every other thing, suddenly you realize that she developed myeloid leukemia also. And she needed bi-weekly blood transfusions. So till you receive, you don't understand what blood transfusion is all about. And somebody's blood is the one which is saving you, securing you. 
And from being an absolutely happy-go-lucky kind, you become conscious that your life is dependent on somebody's charity, somebody's act of kindness. And that changes you as a person, changes your perception about life, changes you thinking about others. From being a self-centered individual, you become an outgoing individual who is more concerned about people around you. And then finally she has bone marrow transplant and she says, look how I have changed as a person. Another story, this is a story about another woman, young woman, a mother of one child, two year old, in the arms of her husband, Anushri, if I may call her. And she was pregnant with the other. Early pregnancy led to heavy bleeding and because of certain factors or lack of certain factors in the blood, that profuse bleeding almost put her to death. And blood, a constant supply of blood is what made her alive, what kept her going. And she says, it's not just about me because my body is full of blood from other individuals. Otherwise, I have no blood left in me. And what I owe my life to the people who have given me blood. And not just I, but the two-year-old who was left in my husband's arms. My husband, who could have become a widower. And the young unborn who she was carrying in the womb. So, donating blood to one individual saved three lives. But not everyone is as lucky as this case. Another case where Gaurav and Smita had a young baby, four year old, a case of brain tumor. Four surgeries, chemotherapy, and all the possible treatments that were possible, the child did not make it. And needed plasma transfusion. A young child, not more than a few cups of blood in the body, yet still survived. Now the father of Rhea has become a blood donor himself. And you'll be happy to know how much blood he donates, plasma he donates every year, ten times a year. And his ideal is to be able to donate 12 times a year. And he feels, let no Rhea suffer the fate of my Rhea. Let nobody go through, no parent go through what we've gone through. This is how people change. So, when you are in need, when you receive, it's the time which teaches you how to behave yourself. And it's all about behavioral changes. And behavioral changes from swachita to blood donation, I think we as society need to coordinate our efforts. We need to work on every individual. Because, I, I mean, some very heartline science also says that when people my age have higher amount of cholesterol, because of the fact that body is responding to the stress levels. So it's not what you're eating, you may be eating cholesterol-free diet, but it's your own body mechanism which is producing cholesterol as a response to the stress. And by donation, you're actually helping yourself. Because with donating blood, those factors also get out of your system. And you get that gap, three months, four months, one year, to rid yourself till you build up again the same amount of stress and same amount of cholesterol in your system. So an act of giving which is actually helping your body to rejuvenate as well. But when we look at the data and we look at the details, in every individual blood is traveling something like 96,540 kilometers in a day. 96,000 
500 40 kilometers in an average individual. This is the kind of blood flow our body is having. And in this blood flow, we actually have three, four different components. Many more components, but three, four major components. We have RBCs, which compose close to 55%. And these red blood cells are the ones which are actually oxygen carriers. And also waste carriers. And close to 55% is RBC, but about 40% is plasma, which is the matrix in which the cells are found and it is floating all over. 4% would be platelets, responsible for clothing and other such things. And 1% is white blood cells, which is dealing with the infections that we get. But, and every, every cell, like we can just give somebody plasma. Or we could only transfuse WBC. We could give red blood capsules, RPCs. But the fact is that when each one of them may have a different kind of shelf life. And because each has very short shelf life, except plasma which has about one year of shelf life, everything else becomes expired within a couple of hours to a couple of days and have to be kept at a certain temperature. They need to be protected. We need to have great mechanism when it comes to blood banks. And so far as blood banks, history in India goes, it goes way back from 1962 <coughs> at Calcutta to many, many more over the years that we have produced. And we've not done very really badly. Because as per the World Bank, uh, World Health Organization, WHO, WHO recognizes certain parameters in storage capacity and the methodologies. We, we've done fairly well and we are a compliant country. With positive resources, we are still a compliant country and we've done quite well on those fronts. In fact, we are an example for many other countries. In this processing, we, we have something like a network of blood banks. We need about 12 million units every year, 12 million units. <coughs> and 2016, we secured something like 10.9 million units. And the gap and supply shortage is what we need to make up. We are a 130 million country. It's not such a task. And I always give credit to the brain power Indians have. I'm sure we have technologies to support. We have the will to do the act. We will always have donors who are willing to do the act of goodness. It's just to motivate the right people to do the right thing. And giving it to the right individual in need. An act which is free of any returns except feeling good about yourself. And some say even feeling good about oneself takes away the goodness in charity. It should be done even without that thought. Without even thinking that I'm doing somebody a favor or I'm doing, I'm great because I'm doing this act. But you do it because you think that's the right thing to do. And because it's the right thing to do, let's do it. And coming from a woman, I must emphasize the girls in this country need better health care and more conscientious, less about the figures and more about good health. And not just this country, all over the world. Being a woman and being a feminist is coming to me. Because I genuinely feel that whenever I have gone to a blood donation camp, a lot of young girls turn up. That means the will willing part of the individual is not missing. They are willing to give blood. They want to do this act of goodness. They have all the right intentions 
and the heart at the right place. Yet, 50 to 70 percent in every blood donation drive, women get rejected. Can you imagine 50 to 70 percent in this country, women get rejected, they can't donate blood? They can't donate blood for the simple reason that hemoglobin levels are low. They are anemic. Anemic, either not being looked after well or not being eating well. Either case, it's not what we expect. Women need to be as healthy as their male colleagues. And that is what finally leads to higher MMR in my assessment. Why do we have such high maternal mortality rate? And another part of this, when we look at the blood and we look at blood types, there are about 35 blood groups which have been identified. But the major methodology adopted is presence or absence of antigens. So when we do the systems and we consider RBCs as the main component, so antigens present. So we have mainly A, A, B, A, B, A, B, or O. And in this comes the next factor is RHD, which is the other antigen, RH positive or negative, which presence will determine pure positive, absence will say you're negative. And if we combine the two, then you can have various other blood. A, B plus, A, B minus, A plus, B plus, O, O plus, O minus, A, B, O, etc. Why I'm saying this is the fact that there, apart from these two types of categorizing blood, there are close to 13 factors in the blood. <coughs> And out of those 13 factors, some are responsible for coagulation and that's what stops blood from flowing, excessive flowing. But many a time when women get into pregnancy, those factors are not tested and which finally leads to higher MMR. So why women who end up at the gynecological clinic what if we start testing women for factors present or absent in their system? With those factors, if we have a screening, because most women, I mean, first we must have institutional childbirth. Second, when we are dealing with institutional childbirth, before the childbirth, there should be factors which need to be tested. And if we screen those factors at that point in time, we can actually control MMR. And we can actually, by dietary uh, habits, by going back to our nutritious high iron, high calcium diet, by having the right method of dealing with the health issues prevalent amongst young girls and women, we can change the scenario in which our country operates. Blood donation is just the tip of an iceberg and can actually screen many, many more underneath aspects. And when we do that, I'm sure the healthcare system will get energized. And with all the acts of affection, love, compassion, I genuinely feel it's a human issue. When you give your blood, your organ to someone, because at the end of the day, it's a connecting tissue. It connects the whole body. And the connection between human beings also gets established. It's not just connection within myself, but it's my connection with a larger mankind, which is outside me. And when I say, Mujh mein bhi tum, aur tum mein bhi tum, hum sab mein wahi. That means God is present in me, God, same God is present in you, and same God is present in all our surroundings. And if <clears throat> same God is present in all of us, we are all connected to each other. 
And if all of us are connected as one race, one human being, your presence inside me or my presence inside you is ensured by Mother Nature. It further establishes we come from the same source, irrespective of our skin color, irrespective of our gender, irrespective of all the other man-made transitions that we may have made and transgressions, I must say. But we are all just one and our blood connects us all. And that connection, if we are able to establish across mankind, I'm sure this thought itself will bring greater peace in the world. Because when you know you're connected, you stop looking at other practices which are discriminatory in nature. Your thought process changes. And it is the thought, it is the seed which we all need to act upon to bring peace in the world, to bring the right thoughts at the right place, right origin. And when we look at the banks, we don't want banks to go bankrupt. Because economy runs us. But the bank of love, in the form of blood bank, why should they be bankrupt? Let's overfill it. Fill it with emotions, fill it with care protected because blood in India is registered under Drugs Act. It, it's, it's a drug. Now if it's a drug, it's registered with the Drugs Act and the Director General of Drug Controller needs to look after the management, licenses. Let's do away with all the HIV cases, handle it right, syphilis, uh, hepatitis B, C, and out of 124 countries, the, the 56 countries are not compliant, but India thankfully is a compliant country. And we've also started last year something called Rakkosh. Through this Rakkosh mechanism, the Minister of Health actually connected various platforms and tried to sort out the shortage issues efficiency issues, management issues. So I think we are on the right track and let's ensure our blood banks, our banks are overfilled with joy and grace of mankind which flows or outflows every other week. So thank you very much.